Hi, this is Margo. This is Sunday evening, June the 19th, 2022. I hope everyone is safe and doing as well as possible. I'd like to welcome everyone to the show tonight. This will be my weekly update that I'll be putting on YouTube. We're going to go over climate-related items around the world and methane and sea ice and some earthquakes but I want to start off I have <coughs> sorry I have a couple of articles I want to start with this is from the Barents Observer they're out of Norway they report on all kinds of Arctic news this was from <coughs> uh, June the 16th and there's a picture of an oil field on fire in Russia it says Russia's biggest natural gas field is ablaze okay it's a uh, natural gas field flames goes hundreds of meters into the sky as a fire hits the Uringoy field in Russia's north. So we'll just go over a little of this. The fire erupted after a pipeline burst near one of the production units. The accident happened during night and emergency personnel were on site early morning 16th of June. The Uringoy is Russia's biggest natural gas field with reserves up to 10 trillion cubic meters. It is operated by Gazprom Do Dobicha Uringoy, a regional subsidiary unit of national energy company Gazprom. Production started in the early 1980s and now amounts to about 230 billion cubic meters per year. Like most of Russia's natural gas fields, the Uringoy is connected with pipelines leading westwards. When another fire hit the Uringoy in 2021, it affected ex exports to the EU and resulted in a hike in natural gas prices. <clears throat> the lion's share of the Uringoy gas is exported to Europe, but the field is also linked with pipelines that could bring the gas to the Far East as well as China. The Arctic is Gazprom's key production area and a lion's share of its fields are located in the Yalmonedets Okrug, according to regional authorities. And it's uh, Gazprom and its sub subsidiaries now annually produce more than 400 billion cubic meters of natural gas in the region. This includes gas from the Uringoy. And I looked up where this is on Google Earth. <coughs> and um, here's the Yama Peninsula. So it's southeast of that. And this area here is the Uringoy gas field and this is the Gulf of Bob here and it's down uh, a little southeast of that and so what we're going to see is um, very high methane levels in this whole area. 
that are just kind of billowed up because of that. And then another article. This is from countercurrents.org and the title is Buckle Up the Arctic's Sizzling. Here's a picture of the ice melt in the Arctic. I'm going to put this on clean view. This is by Robert Hunsinker. This is from the 18th. The Arctic is turning into a dream come true for doomsayers. It's heating way too fast and Nostradamus is dancing in the street. Record smashing Arctic temperatures may brighten the outlook for those who thrive actually enjoy disaster scenarios, but the great majority of people only get off on disasters in a movie theater, not in the wide open spaces at the top of the world. Even Hollywood itself could never possibly capture the moment, the drama, the heightened level of deep concern of flabbergasted scientists as temperatures in the Arctic skyrocket. What's happening? Indisputably, it's all about cars, planes, trains, cows, heavy industry, and electric power plants emitting tons of CO2 into the upper atmosphere where it blankets heat. In that regard, there are limits to what works and what doesn't for nature's climate system to continue functioning so that humans can live and breathe and survive. Global warming, anomalous temperatures which are beyond the norm of thousands of years just don't cut it. It's at the biggest disruption level in human history and it's downright ugly and outright scary. New studies have discovered that extraordinary global heating in the Arctic that's seven times faster than the global average in the North Barents Sea region. This is awful news. Scientists are alarmed, viewing it as an early warning sign of what's in store for the rest of the far north and ultimately the planet as a whole seven times faster is insane. Shockingly, average annual temperatures have logged um, 2.7 C per decade and as high as uh, 4 C in autumn months. That's the fastest rates of heat on Earth. According to the IPCC, greater than 2 C spells big trouble. And um, it goes on. So, I'll leave the link below to this article and the one of the Barents Observer. But the area that they're focusing on is the North Barents Sea. And on NASA Worldview, uh, this is the Barents Sea up here. Um, this is on the west side of Novaya Zemlya and up north the North Barents Sea is uh, next to Svalbard and Franz Josef Land and but the whole Barents Sea is in trouble and um, you'll see along this Russia coastline uh, we're, we're already in the browns and moving into the reds for sea surface temperature anomaly um, in this Barents Sea area. And also while we're here, here's the Yamal Peninsula and the area where, uh, where we saw the gas fires um, you can see these red dots, these are fires 
That's the fire layer that's turned on on NASA Worldview. So I'm not sure if, um, exactly where that oil field is. Somewhere down in here. <coughs> so there's that. So I uh, just thought I'd lead off with those stories. And now moving on to Climate Reanalyzer. This will give us a little overview of how the planet is today. Here we are today, the 19th. And uh, these are maximum temperatures in the Arctic. See these greens? See the dark green? That's about 5C. And we can see it's coming up in the North Atlantic and also across the Barents Sea here. And any green shade is above freezing. So we can see most of the Arctic is the air temperature is above freezing today. Worldwide, um, here we are. We've got whites coming up through Texas all the way up into South Dakota, it looks like. And white is uh, 100 degrees or higher. And coming across Africa and Saudi Arabia and Iran and coming across to India. Here we've got whites in China. Here's two meter temperature anomaly for today. We can see the browns. Uh, this is, here's the Yama Peninsula and here's the area where the, uh, the gas field is. In Russia, it's brown across that area. Also across this Siberia coastline. And see the blues right next to the browns, Canada, and in uh, the U.S. This is because the jet stream is very loopy and is not holding in the cold air. And we still have some reds over the Antarctic. This is next to the Weddell's, uh, Weddell Sea and ice shelf just east of that. Worldwide we're up 0.2 C higher than normal. The northern hemisphere is up 0.4 C. The Arctic is up 0.9 C. The Antarctic is down 0.8 C. The southern hemisphere is down 0.1 C and the tropics are up 0.1 C higher than normal. And you know when they talk about increase in global temperature um, that's not if they say like 1 C or 2 C. That's not universal for the whole planet all at once. You know we see um, like in the Arctic it's 0.9 C higher than normal right now and so it's different at different places around the planet and here's precipitation and clouds and uh, this is, we can see rain around the southern tip of Greenland and snow um, just inside and we've got rain around Iceland and then rain to the east of Greenland here in the Fram Strait and we've got rain 
um, coming across Russia here and also across Russia in that that Yamal Yamalia area. Also we have rain um, it's raining on the sea ice here in this East Siberian Sea so that'll melt the ice out pretty fast and so on here's the flat view of the rain Here's what used to be the jet stream. See the big loops here coming down around the Arctic or from the Arctic. That's the cold air coming down. See the loops and then where it goes up then it's hot hot there from Texas up. Same thing on the east side here. And then the southern hemisphere is totally broken. And um, there's no rhyme or reason. Here's the ice and snow cover for today. And we can see the uh, places where it's open water now here in the Laptev Sea. And it's melting out really fast there, here in the Bering Strait and the Chukchi Sea, how that's melting out in this Bering Sea that's open. And the Kara Sea is melting really fast. And we've got the extents narrowing down around Greenland and in the Baffin Bay and around Canada and the Hudson Bay. Here's sea surface temperature anomaly. This is for yesterday. And we'll see all the browns around the Russia coastline moving into reds. Around, uh, so it's brown here next to Novaya Zemlya and also around Svalbard and Franz Josef Land and so this is the Barents Sea this area where that article was talking about and see it's brown um, next to the Yamal Peninsula brown here in the Laptev Sea and brown here in the Bering Strait all around Alaska. We've got reds moving into pinks around Kamchatka. Browns in the Hudson Bay and so on. Now here's the flat view and these interior seas, bodies of water or going brown and even red here in the Mediterranean. So you can see that sea surface temperatures are on the rise. Look at around Australia and Papua New Guinea, Indonesia, it's all brown. Reds here around Kamchatka and um, between Japan and China and Russia there. Worldwide we're up 0.4 C higher than normal. Northern Hemisphere, North Atlantic and North Pacific are up 0.5 C. The Southern Hemisphere is up 0.3 C and the equatorial Pacific is down 0.2 C. That's lower than normal. Alright, so now we'll move on to methane. 
I have two days worth of methane data f to show from NOAA. I'm going to start with Friday the 17th in the morning for the MET-OT-B or MET-OT-1 satellite. And we've been tracking this 469 millibar level. The mean or average was 1924 parts per billion. The high reading was 2340. And see the pinks are coming so far south. That's a, a range. This pink is anything between a thousand and whatever. I mean two thousand, sorry. And whatever is the high reading here. So between two thousand and 2340 parts per billion. And see these pinks are coming all the way uh, to the Antarctic coastlines here. In the afternoon the mean was 1925. The high reading was 2354. And then for yesterday the 18th back to the morning. The mean was 1925 and the high reading was 2368. And in the afternoon the mean was 1924 and the high reading was 2354. Here's the spreadsheet and chart. So um, that averaged out on the 18th to, to be 1924.5 parts per billion, which was the same as what we had last week. So no change this week. It's holding right up here on that blue line. We're 15 parts per billion higher than a year ago and 55 parts per billion higher than when I started recording this on March the 1st of 2019. <coughs> so you can see the the increase every year and um, we're just now really coming into the big heating time for methane, so we should start to see it really going up now. Let's see what happened this week. So here we were in the show last week for the 11th, we were at 1924.5. And so that was on Saturday. Sunday, no change. Monday, it went down half a part per billion. Tuesday, it jumped up 1.5 to 1925.5. And on that day, we were 17.5 parts per billion higher than a year ago. Wednesday, um, no change. Thursday it went up another half a part per billion. Friday it went down 1.5 and then Saturday no change from Friday to Saturday. So it was hovering around around uh, that 1924.5 up to 1926 this week. Now we'll move on to CAMS. We're going to look at Saturday the 18th. Arctic view and surface level. This is from Copernicus Atmosphere Monitoring Services. There's our color ledger. Now the data is for Saturday and the forecast period is Sunday through Wednesday. <coughs> so
So here from Norway over east is um, very high methane readings so over into Russia. Here's the Yamal Peninsula and so where that gas field is on fire is down in this area. See the high readings of methane coming up here. Also further east, see it's coming back to life. And it's um, bubbling up around Combe Symbolics here and in the North Kara Sea. And here at Koktovik, Alaska, and in the interior of Alaska, it's really coming to life. It's also, um, this is our problem spot in the North Atlantic, just off the coast of Canada. It's hinting at bubbling up. Sometimes it's really heavy, other times is just hinting at it. We've got high readings here south of the Hudson Bay area. That's in Canada. Here's North Dakota and Canada. This is where the tar sands are. Now we'll go to the North Pole view. we can see pretty much the whole northern hemisphere here. See the green waves move down. That's high methane when you see those waves coming out from the continents. See like here moving down. And here it's moving out from the U.S. and Canada. Here's the Persian Gulf filled up. The U.K. is a big blob. Um, Germany, other areas. Here's India, China. Here's Korea, here's Japan. See the waves moving out here. And then here in North America, specifically in the U.S., this is from the Midwest over East. It's like a, almost a solid blob line coming down along the Mississippi River area and then moving East. Now we're going to hop down to the Antarctic. Here's the Western Peninsula. Here's South America. So we've got North up here. This is the Weddell Sea here and the Weddell Ice Shelf. And the main background color is this 1840 reading, 1840 parts per billion. 
and we're seeing um, a little bit higher than that coming up all around this western peninsula see on both sides <coughs> So it's still coming up, and it's dark down here. Um, it's coming up around this um, Brunt Ice Shelf, and around the Amory Ice Shelf. Also on the southern part, next to the Ross Sea. And we see waves streaming down from South America. And from Africa here, see that. Now the solstice will happen on Tuesday, the 21st. Um, the winter solstice for the southern hemisphere summer solstice for the northern hemisphere so northern hemisphere will be the longest day of the year and for the southern hemisphere will be the longest night of the year so it'll be th the official beginning of winter for the southern hemisphere and official beginning day of summer beginning of summer for the northern hemisphere now we'll go to the global view And you can see these really high readings on New Zealand. And we've got higher readings popping up around some of the coastlines of Australia. This is Perth down here. I think this is Sydney over here on the right. And then this upper uh, upper region. And there's that. Here's 500 HPA. It's about halfway up in the atmosphere. We can see high readings from southern China into southern Asia over into India. Here's another um, high area. This is in Russia. Also over here. <coughs> um, this is on this east coast of Russia. And then up here. This is over the Laptev Sea. And then here and the Nor uh, Scandinavian area and look at this high reading coming across the Pacific oh, I'm, I want to refresh and get the correct color ledger and I noticed this week oh, why is that? here it goes it's taken a little while <laughs> this week the main background color um, in the southern hemisphere went up 
it's this really bright green uh, that's about 1850 parts per billion and we had been seeing some darker greens down here but right now um, the lowest we're seeing is 1850 And we've got reds further south and yellows further south as well. And then total column. And here you can see the highest readings over China, India, and so on. And I wanted to show a couple more over here. Here's sulfur dioxide today. And at 500 HPA, <coughs> highest readings are down here over South America. That's probably uh, well, combo plate of volcanoes and earthquakes. Here's the ozone today. This is over the Antarctic. And the hole is forming. Here's the aqua reading. And anything that's in the greenish or bluish tinge is below normal. The solid yellow is 300 Dobson units. <coughs> and see we've got aqua um, here in the South Pacific too. Here's the Arctic view. And the global view. I wanted to zoom in a little. <coughs> we can see this area uh, coming up over the U.S. from the southwest up into Canada that has the greenish tinge. That's the reading just below 300 Dobson units. That's 280 to 300. So I wouldn't call it a hole, but it is a, a little bit thinner there. It's thinner than that down here in these, uh, around the e e equator, all this equatorial region. We even have aquas here near Indonesia and over South America. There's that. Now we'll move into the sea ice part of our show. Okay, we're going to start with the Arctic uh, sea ice thickness. These are the Navy, U.S. Navy models. Here we are for today. Here's our chart on the right. Um, the purple light lavender is about half a meter thick. Dark purple is about one meter thick. This bright aqua is about two meters thick. The green is about three meters thick. The yellow is about 3.5 meters thick. The bright red is about 4.5 meters thick. And the dark red is about 5 meters thick. So here today we can see a lot more purple and blue coming in. And not very much bright aqua. Uh, different shades of aqua across 
but more dark aqua is showing up as it's thinning out so starting up here in this uh, North Barent Sea we're seeing almost no ice and uh, it's been melting around Svalbard and around Franz Josef Land and we can see in the Kara Sea around the coastline it's pretty open here's the Yamal Peninsula and this is in high melt and here in the Latev Sea we've got a lot opening up from the coastline up across the New Siberian Islands and then down now this is uh, I believe this is where we saw the rain happening today and then more open water next to the Tamir Peninsula and around Severnaya Zemlya and then see how how it's uh, thinning down going into the dark blue and dark aqua even down to the North Pole and then here, the Bering Strait is open and it's retreating more here in the Chukchi Sea here's the Beaufort Sea and we're seeing uh, more darker aquas come in this is as a result of the ice starting to break up and down here near Canada there's a big hole and we're seeing less of the greens and yellows and definitely less of the reds very little red and dark red uh, mainly along this Canada coastline and a little along the Greenland coastline here the Baffin Bay is melting pretty good and then the Hudson Bay is melting out Now we'll take a look at the 30 day animation this was updated to yesterday <coughs> so the data goes back three weeks and the forecast goes out to next Saturday so let's watch up here first now watch how this is thinning down see a lot of thinning down there's a uh, like a circular region um, here just next to the North Pole that's really thinning out looks like a, we're gonna have a hole opening up here pretty soon this is in the Laptev Sea. And then see the darker aqua. Uh, really taking hold here in the Beaufort Sea. And look in the Baffin Bay. That's really thinning out in the forecast period. Also in the Hudson Bay, high melt almost nothing in the Hudson Bay by next Saturday is what we're seeing and then these tributaries are starting to melt out and they're flowing the ice is flowing down and 
here's the Beaufort sea ice thickness. Canada's here on the right. Here's where the thickest ice is. Just a little hair of the 5 meter thickness. And just a little tinge of, of red, bright red. A little, a little bit of yellow and some green. That's the 3 meter thickness. And then the aqua shades coming in. Here, see the lines? These are the leads opening up in the sea ice as it's coming apart. Here's the Bering Strait that's open. Here's the 30 day animation. This was updated to today. So the forecast period goes to next Sunday. Mainly we're seeing uh, the changes in the shades of aqua from a lighter aqua going into a darker aqua. And the leads, you can see the lines as, as they pull apart and then close back up even. And now down to the Antarctic. Here we're watching the refreeze around the Antarctic continent. We can see a little bit more growth here in the Ross Sea and on the west side. Also coming out from the Weddell Sea in the north side. Here's the 30-day animation, and this was updated to yesterday. So the forecast goes out to next Saturday. So, so there's that. Okay, now this is National Snow and Ice Data Center. As of yesterday, this is the sea ice concentration in the Arctic. And wherever you have the blues, um, this is where it's really starting to break up and melt. We can see blues around the North Pole here now and a lot of blues in this Kara Sea and here around the Russia coastline and here in the Beaufort Sea around Canada and here in the Baffin Bay and around Greenland and so on now the gold line is the median, so we're pretty far in under that. Here's the chart for Arctic sea ice extent. This is as of yesterday. The dotted line is 2012. We had been under 2012 and then kind of met up with it and now we're just slightly above 2012. We can see 2012 took a steeper um, steeper decline here than this year but we're on the downward swing and we're still well below the median. Here's the Antarctic 
see the eyes concentration and here's their extent chart for yesterday and um, here's last year see it was regrowing pretty good last year in fact it started early the, that's the greenish line here we are this year and we're not keeping up with this increase um, it's it is refreezing but just um, much much slower now this is shocking <coughs> this is the Greenland ice sheet melt this is as of yesterday and it was raining and snowing down here in the southern area S and so they're showing um, this whole southern area is in melt mode also all of the all of the almost all of the edges are in melt mode wherever you see the salmon color so this is in high melt here are the cumulative days of melt for this year and we're seeing blues all around the edges now here's the extent the dotted line blue dotted line is the median the red line is this year and these gray lines are where it's been in the years past at certain points and um, here we are yesterday we can see the melt spiked up oh uh, that's about 18 percent ice melt going on yesterday so that's very high uh, for this time of year way up from the median and that's all of those now we'll move on to NASA worldview okay going to start in the Antarctic see it's all dark down here turn on our nighttime layer and I'm tracking this A76 iceberg we've been watching this for a while and here it is and it's it's kind of rotating I'm I'm thinking that it'll get out to sea um, before the ice captures it I'm not so sure but I'll show you what happened this week with it here we were last week right here this is just the uh, western tippy, po tippy point of the western peninsula here's the iceberg and there's ice right next to it so let's see what happened this week here on the 13th see it moved a little more and here's the 14th 15th 16th we can see it's pulling away from the ice there 17th see it's rotating to the right 18th another big rotation and it pulled away from the ice on on the left side there and then here it is today and it rotated a little more so it's done um, uh, quite a bit of rotation it doesn't seem to have gone out that much further but mainly rotated so 
I don't know. There's sea ice over on the right side and a little bit of ice up here. We're looking through a cloud here. But um, it's it had momentum and now it's rotating to the right. So just tracking it and here's the edge of the sea ice out here. <clears throat> so that's what I wanted to show there. Now, turn, okay, so it's dark now. Now we'll go to the Arctic, and I'll turn on the sea ice concentration layer, and you see all the colors that's where it's melting and where it goes down into aqua blue purple those are holes opening up we can see the Hudson Bay is melting uh, Baffin Bay see pretty high melt Here in the nearest strait, we can see a hole where it joins up with the Baffin Bay. Here on this east side of Greenland, you can see the melt. And look around the North Pole, see the the reds. It's that's where it's starting to deteriorate. And here around Franz Josef Land, that's in high melt. Here in the Kara Sea. It's in high melt. Also, <coughs> uh, coming up around Tamir Peninsula and here in the Laptev Sea, here's the hole. You see the clouds there. And along the coastlines, that's in high melt. And then here, uh, see the aqua there's a hole there that's where it's raining today so this whole area um, along the Russia coastline is in high melt we can see the Bering Strait is open here's the Chukchi Sea it's retreating there and this is the Beaufort Sea and see the reds, that's where it's breaking up. So uh, let's just go back to last Sunday and we can see what's happened melt wise. Okay, here we were last Sunday. Here's Monday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and here it is today. So that's, that's that layer. Now we'll just go in on the satellite view starting here at Greenland this is the Lincoln Sea now it looks like the larger pieces of ice have broken down looks and it's it's exiting here it's moving out this is the nearest strait can see the open water and then the pieces of ice there. <coughs> Here's where it's flowing down um, and exiting here into the Baffin Bay. Here's Greenland. This is Ellesmere Island on the left. You can see the open water. Open water here. And there's the piece.
pieces of ice. And we have just a, a short area of ice on this North Baffin Bay next to Greenland. And then here it's open on this west coast of Greenland. See, coming down. Now here's where the rain is coming up to the coastline and snow. So uh, yesterday, I'll show you what was happening yesterday. Um, see the big uh, the big cloud that's rain and snow and that's where it was showing up with all of that melt on the interior yesterday. Here we are today. Look in this um, Hudson Hudson Strait. See that's open. And Hudson Bay that's in high melt. We can see that. Now Greenland and Iceland. We've got clouds up here. Here's Fallbard. We've got clouds. Here on the 17th you can see all this open water on the right. And see how it's gone in. And here's Franz Josef Land and just a little skim of ice east of there. Here we are today. We've got clouds. Here's Novaya Zemlya. There's no ice down here in the Barents Sea. Here in the Kara Sea. <coughs> There's a lot of open water. We're looking through clouds here. So it's kind of hard to see all the open water. Here's the Yamal Peninsula. Here's yesterday. Look at all this open water. See, this is in high melt. And here's come some mullets. See the ice melting there. Here we are. See the open water through there. Coming on up, this is the Laptev Sea. Here's Tamir Peninsula. Here we are today. This is hard to tell. It's so cloudy. Here's the Laptev Sea. Let's go back. Okay, here on the 17th, we can make out through the clouds where this open water is. Let's see, and the ice is breaking up all the way down um, next to New Siberian Islands. So yesterday was a good view here. So there's the ice. And you can see it's cracking up here. It's yesterday. Here's today. It's just very cloudy. Here's Wrangell Island. Okay, see the open water at the Bering Strait. There's no ice there. And here's where the um, Chukchi Sea starts. And you can see the ice retreating here. And uh, around the coastline of Alaska. All the way up to Barrow. See, it's open. <coughs> So here's the ice. Yeah. 
this is the Beaufort Sea and when you zoom in you can see open water between these pieces so the leads have, are melting very quickly look at this see and here's Canada and so the thickest ice is um, along this Canadian coastline also along the northern Greenland coastline Here's Ellesmere Island, and we're back to where we started. Now, let's see what we can make out. Here's some cracks. You can see, see the dark lines. We're looking through some clouds there, but we can definitely see the ice breaking up. There's some open water. And here's the North Pole right in the center. Over on the west. See, there's some open water. Here's some more opening up. look down here you can see it opening there okay this is 80 82 degrees north latitude go back here it was yesterday 17th so we've had a bunch of clouds it's kind of hard to make out but there's quite a bit of open water next to New Siberian Islands so that's about all we can see right now with the sea ice now let's move on to earthquakes. This is USGS all magnitudes for the last 24 hours. We have 249 right now. And Taiwan got hit. This is right before I started recording tonight. Uh, 6.0 near Walian City. This came in at 6.05 p.m. Pacific Time. And then a 5.2 right next to it at 6.39. These were on land. Um, so no doubt damage will be done with those earthquakes. Here's a couple. Three west of Naha, Japan, 5.5, 5.14.3, and so on. It's a lot of activity on that west side. Here we've got a few South America. We've got one next to the Cocos Plate, 5.1 is top of Guatemala. Here's an unusual earthquake. This is off the coast of Nova Scotia, Canada, or Newfoundland, uh, 4.5. This came in at 944 this morning. 
this is near our hot spot with the methane. Not sure where that is. Could be out a little bit further east there. And we saw movement on the Wanda Fuca plate this week. And another 3.6 right on the western edge today. So it's just more of the same. Here's West Texas. Look at this. We've got nine here today. 3.3 near Toya. That was the largest one. So let's let's turn on seven days all magnitudes. There were 1,893 earthquakes this week. So you can see all the plate movement. Now right down here in the Gulf of California there were f five. And Wait. Now there were three. 5.2, 4.8, and 5.1. Now these are right next to this imperial fault line. That fault line turns into the San Andreas fault line. And so uh, connected to that fault line up on the north end is this Juan de Fuca plate. Look at all this activity this week. 14 and the largest was a 5.6 right on this western edge. We had one day where it really clustered. These were all um, almost in one day 15th. Yeah, most of those were the 15th. So 4's and 3's and 5.6 there. Also down here on the fulcrum point, a lot of activity. So just more of the same. Then one at the top of the Juan de Fuca plate, 4.6. So Alaska. And so on. Let's turn on just the four and a half magnitude or higher. And Scroll through. Okay, we saw the 6.0 in Taiwan. These are 4s and 5s. So that 6.0, that was the only one. Only 6.0 for this week. Uh, the rest have been 4s and 5s. So there's that. So that's my report for tonight. And I'd like to continue reading out of the Bible. I like to bring things back to a spiritual perspective. We're continuing out of the Book of Wisdom written by King Solomon. And this is from the Apocrypha. 
Wisdom Chapter 6 Hear therefore, O ye kings, and understand. Learn, ye that be judges of the ends of the earth. Give ear, ye that rule the people, and glory in the multitude of nations. For power is given you of the Lord, and sovereignty from the highest, who shall try your works and search out your counsels. Because, being ministers of his kingdom, ye have not judged aright, nor kept the law, nor walked after the counsel of God. Horribly and speedily shall he come upon you, for a sharp judgment shall be to them that be in high places. For mercy will soon pardon the meanest, but mighty men shall be mightily tormented. For he which is Lord over all shall fear no man's person, neither shall he stand in awe of any man's greatness. For he hath made the small and great, and careth for all alike. But a sore trial shall come upon the mighty. Upon you, therefore, O kings, do I speak, that ye may learn wisdom, and not fall away. For they that keep holiness holily shall be judged holy, and they that have learned such things shall find what to answer. Wherefore set your affection upon my words, desire them, and ye shall be instructed. Wisdom is glorious, and never fadeth away. Yea, she is easily seen of them that love her, and found of such as seek her. She preventeth them that desire her, in making herself first known unto them. Whoso seeketh her early shall have no great travail, for he shall find her sitting at her, his doors. To think, therefore, upon her is perfection of wisdom, and whoso watcheth for her shall quickly be without care, for she goeth about seeking such as are worthy of her. She with herself favorably unto them in the ways, and meeteth them in every thought. For the very true beginning of her is the desire of discipline, and the care of discipline is love. And love is the keeping of her laws, and the giving heed unto her laws is the assurance of incorruption. And incorruption maketh us near unto God. Therefore the desire of wisdom bringeth to a kingdom. If your delight be then in thrones and scepters, O ye kings of the people, honor wisdom, that ye may reign for evermore. As for wisdom, what she is and how she came up, I will tell you, and will not hide mysteries from you, but will seek her out from the beginning of her nativity, and bring the knowledge of her into light, and will not pass over the truth. Neither will I go with consuming envy, for such a man shall have no fellowship with wisdom. But the multitude of the wise is the welfare of the world and a wise king is the upholding of the people. Receive, therefore, instruction through my words, and it shall do you good. Wisdom chapter 6 So I hope everyone has as good a week as they can. I'm praying for everyone. If you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ, I highly recommend it. I love you all. And until next time, God bless you. Go in peace. 
and I will talk to you soon. Good night.